Green Tree Productions is proud to present Duncanville Weekly News. It's the good news just for the city of champions, Duncanville, Texas. And now, here's your host, John Thompson. Hello world, America. Texas and Duncanville and welcome to this edition of Duncanville Weekly News for the first couple of weeks of the new year 2015. Glad you're logged on and watching. On this show we're going to have mostly the hoops as both the Panthers and the Pantherettes participated in big tournaments over the holidays. But first a couple of announcements. The first one is the Duncanville Chamber of Commerce is being joined again by the city of Duncanville after a two-year hiatus to celebrate Duncanville. The event will be on January the 15th, the Thursday night, at the Hilton Garden Inn. The chamber will present its four major awards and the city will, the mayor, will give the State of the City address along with some other awards. Of course, the highlight of the evening will be the announcement and presentation of the man and woman of the year for 2014 by the people attending. Also, during the first week of January, now the new Duncanville High School Panther football coach will finally be announced, maybe a year late. But at the Dallas Coca-Cola basketball tournament over the holidays, Fans from where our new coach is coming from seem to already know all about it, but until our athletic department makes the announcement, we don't know. Hi, I'm Grady Smith. I've lived in Duncan since 1950. Been watching girls and boys play basketball since then. Watched them go to state first in 1953. Went, went to state again in 1959. I graduated in 1960. I was captain of the football team, made all district. I went to college on, on a football scholarship, love sports in Duncanville, and I'm always ready for some hoops. Hoops? Did you say hoops? We gotcha hoops. Right here in the hoops corner on Duncanville Weekly News with all the highlights from the latest Duncanville Panther and Pantherette basketball games and a peek at upcoming games. The hoops corner is brought to you by... Jane's Memorial Chapel, Duncanville's only home-owned funeral home. Leon Miller Commercial Real Estate Properties on Main Street. Need some space? Call Leon at 972-709-7181. Fry Integra Insurance Services, your hometown insurance agency for 30 years for all insurance types. Call 972 972- 296-9786 for John or Todd by the Wolverton Company serving Duncanville's heating and cooling needs for longer than anybody can remember 972-296-COOL Jim McDonald's State Farm Insurance Agency right here in Duncanville on Main Street like a good neighbor State Farm and Jim are there and by Ambit Energy. You have power options. Call Energy Specialist Don Matt Burnett at 214-918-9981. You'll be glad you did. And now, in the Hoops Corner, here's John with all the Hoops highlights. Hello, Duncanville basketball fans, and welcome back to the Hoops Corner, where we've got five games each, the Panthers and the Pantherettes, so let's get right to the highlights and start this time with the Panthers. They participated over the Christmas holidays in the Dallas Coca-Cola tournament and played most of their games fairly close. So let's see the highlights of the Panthers at the Dallas Coca-Cola tournament. The Ellis Davis Fieldhouse at the Jesse Owens Athletic Complex in Dallas was 
the site of the Panthers games with the Dallas Coca-Cola Annual Tournament, the 75th. And in their first round, they played Dallas Adamson. And Matthew hits an early game three-point shot. And then Chris makes a nice drive as the Panthers jump to an early lead. Jalen pops a 15-foot shot. Then he feeds Ippy for a short-range basket. Adamson has the last shot of the quarter, and they make it. But after one, the Panthers lead 21 to eight. There's the Panther fans at this 9 a.m. game Monday morning. In the second, Jabriant gets it to Matthew for a lay-in. And then Jalen can't find anybody to pass to, so he shoots and hits three. On this inbounds play, Matthew spots Cameron for a layup. And Elijah is loose for two and one. Jaquavian Bowles is in and scores down low. And Chris Smith scores on a break. The Panthers have the ball on the wrong end of the court as the time is expiring. But when you have Matthew McQuaid on your team and got the ball, any end is okay. And the Panthers lead 43-14 to at the half. The second half went pretty fast, and Dante Bam Reese rebounds and scores in his foul. And then Jalen is open for the throwdown. And after three, it's 51-21 Panthers. In the fourth, Cameron makes the good pass to Austin for another easy two. Then Cameron. Drains a three-point shot. Elijah just drives through everybody to score. Then Bam finishes things up. Final, Panther 66 and Dallas Adamson 27. Jalen had 19 and Matthew 17 in the opener of the Dallas Coca-Cola Tournament. Then Monday evening in the second round of the Dallas Coca-Cola Tournament, the Panthers met Dallas Carter, who had beaten West Mesquite in round one. And the Panthers wasted no time as Matthew takes the tip and takes it home. Jalen makes a nice pass to Jabrion for two. Then he hits a three-point shot. But after one, it's 17 apiece. In the second, Jalen spots Austin, who scores down in low. Glad Jalen didn't miss the bus because he hits another three-point shot. Then he steals and scores. And after trailing by nine, the Panthers come back to lead, 36 to 35 at the half. Jabrion makes a nice driving hoop early in the third quarter. And then Austin rebounds and puts back as the Panthers build a double-digit lead. Matthew nails a three-point shot from the Panther water cooler. And after three, it's 57-44, Panthers. In the fourth, Chris and Austin do a give and go with Chris giving and going and Austin giving him the ball. 
Then back to Chris for the layup. Jabriant hits a late game free throw. Final. Panthers 69. Carter 57. A balanced scoring effort with Matthew getting 22, Jalen 16, Chris 12, and Austin scored 11. Then on Tuesday, the Panthers met Coppers Cove in the quarterfinal game, and Jalen picks up where he left off yesterday, hitting a three-point shot. And then later, he makes a well defended driving layup and after one the dogs lead 16 to 11 and duncanville chief of staff mike kratzberg is ready for a panther catch up and he gets it started by matthews three point hoop this one from Jalen gives the panthers the lead midway through the second quarter matthew adds to it with this one and at the half, it's 30-27, Panthers. Jabriant gets the Panthers' second half started with this basket as Pete and Noel and Christy and them look on. Then he drives for two and one. Then Chris drives and... Scores on a jackknife play. And with the dogs going over four minutes without scoring in this quarter, they trail the Panthers 48-32 to after three. In the fourth, Jalen drives and dishes to Bam for the basket. And Jabriant is lonely for this score as the Panthers head into the tournament semifinals with a 63-43 win over Coppers Cove. Jalen and Matthew had 15 apiece, and Jabrant and Chris were also in double figures. Then on Tuesday evening, the semifinals, the Panthers met the Lancaster Tigers again. They had lost to them in November at the McDonald's Invitation, and they are the number one ranked 5A team in Texas, and we saw why as they can beat you outside or inside. But so can the Panthers as Austin hits the board for two. But after one, it's 25 to eight. Tigers. Jalen opens the second quarter with a su- successful three point effort. And Matthew drives through and by four defenders for a two and one. Chris drains a three-point shot. And then Jalen avoids a flop and gets the shooter's rim bounce. Chris hits a 14-foot shot. And the Panthers Cut the deficit to 13 at the half. Chris opens the third with a three-point effort. Followed by Jalen's goal from behind that arc on the floor. And then Jalen feeds Bam for a hoop. But after three, the Tigers still lead by 11. Matthew makes the good pass to Austin for two more in the fourth. And when Jalen scores on this drive with two and a half minutes left, the Panthers have cut the deficit to three points. But that was as close as they could get as the Tigers hit their free throws and the Panthers went cold from the field. Finally. Lancaster 72 and the Panthers 63. Jalen had 23 to lead the Panthers scores. Then New Year's Eve, the Panthers played South Oak Cliff. 
the Golden Bears for the third place trophy in the Dallas Coca-Cola Tournament and got off to a good start with Jalen feeding Austin for the opening score. And then Chris hits a three-point shot, as does Matthew, as the teams swap baskets early on. Then Matthew again on a baseline fall away. Jalen whips it into to Bryant for two more. And after one, the Panthers lead 23 to 15. In the second, let the big dog hunt as Matthew nails yet another three-point shot. Jalen's turn. Nice passing here as it's Cameron to Chris to Ippy for two. But at the half, the Panthers' lead is only 39 to 36. Midway through the third, this game is tied, but Jalen spots a lonely Jabrian to regain the lead. Cameron is in and makes this nice drive and hoop. And the Panthers maintain their three-point lead after three. The teams traded non-highlight type baskets, and South Oak Cliff tied it with two minutes to go in the fourth. And then Jalen makes this basket. There's a minute to go in the game, and it's tied at 60, and the Panthers have the ball and hold it for a final shot to win it. And Cameron hits it for three with 6.2 seconds left. After the timeout, here we go. Final, Panthers 63, and South Oak Cliff, the Golden Bears 60. Matthew and Chris led the scores in the game with 17 and 15 respectively. Jalen was named to the all-tournament team. Jalen, look here one time. Smile. Boy, it's too serious. And Coach Chisholm accepts the trophy for third place in the Dallas Coca-Cola the 75th tournament. Congratulations, Panthers. So now the Panthers settle into District 8, 6A play. There has been no district play since the last show. So here is the district standings after only one game. And as you can see, it's uh, early on. We will have the schedule for the Panthers and the Pantherettes as from here on out, until the playoffs, there are double headers with the girls, the Pantherettes, starting at 6. And the boys, the Panthers, game follows. We'll have that schedule after the Pantherette highlights. And speaking of the Pantherettes, they participated, of course, in the Sandro Meadows Classic here at the Sandro Meadows Arena over the holidays. And here's how they did. On Monday, the 64th annual Sandra Meadows Classic tipped off with the Pantherettes playing the Irving Lady Tigers. And no surprises here as the Pantherettes took all of, let's count them, one, two, three seconds to take the lead for good as Maddie feeds Kyla after taking Sierra's tip. Later, Zay passes to Kyla for two more. Then Zay takes it home her own self. Maddie pops a 17-foot shot. It's KP into Sierra who waits until she's going to get fouled before making two. And one. And it's 23-6 to six after the first quarter.
in the second. Asia scores on a break. And KP pops a short shot. Rosie snares a loose rebound and scores. Then Nisha stops and pops. It happens a time or two every season. The ball gets stuck between the rim and the backboard, and Cliff and Steve have a good look at this, but they can't help them get it down. And at the half, it's 39-12 to 12, Pantherettes. In the third, Maddie snares Kyla's attempt and scores, and she's fouled. And then Asia nails a three-point shot. KP works the low post for two. And after three, it's 66 to 16. In the fourth, Kyla hits an 11 foot shot. And then Asia hits a runner. And Zay hits a Late game layup. Final. Pantherette 78 in the Irving Lady Tigers 22 in game one of the Sandra Meadows Classic. The Pantherettes had nine players score five in double figures in this game. Then on Monday evening in the second round of the Sandra Meadows Classic, the Pantherettes met a highly touted and ranked Fort Worth Trimble Tech, the Lady Bulldogs, and it was over two minutes into the game when Sierra gets the Pantherettes first field goal. Then the Pantherettes trail by 10 midway through the first when Zay scores on a break and then Rosie hits a 17 foot shot. And then Maddie makes a nice move and scores. But after one, it's 23 to 12. Trimble Tech. In the second, C makes a good pass to Asia for two as the Lady Bulldogs get stuck on the number 25 for about six minutes in this quarter. And this free throw by Zay pulls the Pantherettes to within one. And then Nash's three-point basket puts the Pantherettes ahead, but at the half, it's 30 to 29, Trimble Tech. It was a slow third quarter offensive start for both teams, but KP's rebound and hoop kept things close. And then Sierra scores in the lane. But after three, it's still 48 43, Lady Bulldogs. Down by eight, Asia scores on a break. And then Kyla hits a much-needed three-point shot. Then passes cross-court to Che, who hits one from behind that arc on the floor. As the Pantherettes try to catch up. Sierra is fouled working the post. And when she misses a free throw, Zay rebounds and scores. It's late and down by six. Zay is given this three-point basket that everybody knew was late, but the Pantherettes drop this second-round game to Trimble Tech by 68-65 to score. Zay had 16 and Asia had 13 and Maddie had 10 as the Pantherettes head to the silver bracket now. Jane's Memorial Chapel is the only family-owned funeral home in Duncanville and is proud to offer caring and dedicated services from familiar friends. Rick Jane's and his family, the owners of Jane's Memorial Chapel and Funeral Home, have served Duncanville area families in their time of loss since 1998. 
A beautiful and spacious chapel is offered, and Jane's serves all cemeteries. When it comes to finding people you can trust in a time of need, you can turn to Jane's Memorial Chapel. No one else knows families better. 811 South Cockrell Hill in Duncanville. On Tuesday, the Pantherettes met Fort Bend Hightower, who doesn't have much of a scouting team because as they had done to start the tournament, the Pantherettes, namely Asia, score off the tip. A minute later, Zay scores on a drive. Then Sierra travels and scores. Later, she makes it a double-digit lead with this point blank hoop. And after one, it's 16 to three. Pantherettes. In the second, KP makes a couple of quick moves in the lane for two and one. And Maddie. Stays after her shot to score. And at the half, it's 32 to 10. Pantherettes. In the third, Sierra misplays the pass, but not the shot. And after three, it's 41 to 20. In the fourth, Tay hits a three-point shot. And Kyla drives the baseline and dishes to Asia for two. Freshman Ania Thomas is up from the junior varsity for this tournament and makes it count, hitting two and one as the bench goes crazy. To close this one out with the Pantherettes moving on to the semifinals in the silver bracket with a 63-33 win over Fort Bend Hightower. Sarah led the scores with 22 points. On Wednesday, the Pantherettes played Sue Cannon's Trinity Trojans in the silver bracket semifinals game, and it took all of 15 seconds to take the lead for the Pantherettes when Rosie hits this three-point shot in the first possession. Asia hits from the lane. And Zay does a spin move and scores. Then she passes to Maddie on a break for two more. Kyla scores late in the quarter. And after one, it's 20 to seven, Pantherettes. In the second, Maddie hits a turnaround. And Zay makes a nice drive for two. And the score at the half shows the Pantherettes with a 16 point lead. In the third, KP avoids a flop with this play and hoop. Then she feeds Sierra for two more. And after three, the Pantherettes have a 20 point lead. Tay scores in the lane in the fourth. And Anilla makes a nice drive in hoop. And Asia is ahead of the pack for two more. Final, Pantherettes 51 and the Trinity Lady Trojans 32. Zay had 14 points to lead nine Pantherette scorers. Then on New Year's Eve, the Pantherettes played Cedar Park Vista Ridge for the Silver Bracket Championship and again scored off of the tip. Then Maddie rebounds and puts back with her fingertips. 
Sierra works the post for two more. As the Pantherettes build a small lead. Rosie hits an 18-foot shot. And Zay makes a nice driving basket. And after one, it's 23 to 6, Pantherettes. Sierra scores in the post in the second. And it was mostly all C in the quarter. And at the half, the Pantherettes lead by eight. At the half, tournament director Steve Martin presented the Pantherettes superfan this year to Royce Monsnall, a longtime Pantherettes supporter. It would be nice if we could understand what Steve is saying, but Rosie pops a three-point effort. Mr. Ridge has pulled to within two points, but Zay scores on the board. Then Kyla makes a nice basket. And then passes to Maddie for a hoop. And after three, the Pantherettes have got the lead back up to nine. In the fourth, KP gets on the board with this quick shot in the lane. Then Zay again. And Kyla scores during a slowdown part of the Pantherette game. And it's over. The Pantherette 64 and Vista Ridge 55. Maddie and Sierra were on the all-tournament team that was presented much, much later. Now it's time for District 8-6A action. And like the Panthers, the Pantherettes have played no district games since the last show. And here's what the district standings for the Pantherettes looked like then and what they look like now, the teams now will play double headers from here on. And here's the lineup for the next couple of weeks for the Panthers and the Pantherettes. On Tuesday the 6th, the teams will be at South Grand Prairie. And then on Friday the 9th, Cedar Hill, the Longhorns, will be here. Then on Tuesday the 13th, the teams will travel down to Middle Othian. It'll be the Panthers versus the Panthers and the Pantherettes versus the Lady Panthers. The Pantherettes always play at 6, followed by the Panthers at approximately 7.30. We'll be back on January the 15th with the highlights of those games and more. As we close, let's see some fan shots taken over the holidays at the basketball games. And we'll be back on January the 15th. Thanks for watching.